What's up guys, Son of a Boomer here. Today we're talking about the Rock Island Import Single Shot Shotgun. Let's get to it. What I have in front of me is a shotgun imported by Rock Island Armory. Rock Island Armory is traditionally known for their reliable budget firearms, specifically their 1911 line. Um, but that reputation refers to the guns that they themselves manufacture. This gun was manufactured in Turkey by a company called Daria Arms. Now Turkish shotguns have, a, have had mixed reviews uh, some are praised, others are vilified. Today, I'll be exploring this particular Turkish shotgun, giving you the positives and the negatives that I have seen in my experience. This particular shotgun is a single shot break action. It's chambered in 20 gauge, and it will accept up to three inch shells. It's very simple to operate. You simply pull back on this trigger guard right here. You can see there's kind of a groove for you to put your fingers there and pull down. The barrel will swing down. You can insert your shell right in there. Then all you have to do is close it. Hear that click. It's not gonna come apart unless you pull the trigger guard again. You can then pull the hammer back right here and pull the trigger. Once this is done, you can repeat the process by pulling the trigger guard. Now it will not automatically eject the shell, but you can grab the shell easily enough and remove it. Then load your next round in, close it, repeat the process by pulling the hammer back and fire. Pretty simple. Now the trigger guard is a bit stiff and kind of clunky, but it isn't super difficult to pull. The hammer on the other hand is a different story. Um, for me, it's not too much of a problem, but uh, someone who doesn't have very good hand strength or a child, um, probably would have a difficult time of pulling that hammer back. So just something to be aware of if you're looking at this gun uh, for someone who's a little bit younger. This gun comes with a brass bead front sight as well as some uh, polymer plastic uh, rear sights. They are red right there you can see and it actually comes with two different options so you can pick your preference. There's not too much of a difference. You can see this one's a little bit, it's a little bit higher than the other one. The stock and the forend are both polymer. The barrel itself is 20 inches. Now this gun is just over three feet long and it weighs just over five pounds. It is a small and very light shotgun. One of the neat features is you can make it even smaller, as I said, by breaking it open and folding it in half. This makes it an excellent candidate for a backpack gun or just a gun that you want to throw in your truck and you want to store it in some place rather small. Now, as stated before, this is their 20 gauge version, but it does come in 410 and 12 gauge. Model number for the 410 is the TK104. Model number for the 20 gauge is TK105. And the model number for the 12 gauge is TK113. We thought it was 106. Gotcha. The 12 gauge is a bit unique compared to these other models in that it's able to take chokes and even comes with a choke set. So something to be aware of if you're looking to purchase 20 gauge and the 410 do not come with chokes. They do not have the ability to take chokes. The 12 gauge does take chokes and does come with a choke set, or at least it has in the past. So choosing anything other than the 12 gauge means you're not gonna get as much bang for your buck. However, by purchasing a 20 gauge or a 410, you will not have to shoot a 12 gauge round out of a five pound gun. So, trade-offs. For those of you who are interested in the 12 gauge, um, I have looked at several other reviews of people who own them and every single one of them, even with birdshot, has said this thing kicks like a mule. So, not steer you away from the 12 gauge, but if you are recoil sensitive, or if you just like having a shoulder, it might not be the best option for you. <laughs> so 
what about this 20 gauge guy? What can he do? Let's take a look out at the range. All right, so I've taken a couple shots with this already, um, but we're gonna give it a go and shoot a couple more. This is just bird shot. And I'm gonna show you, even for a 20 gauge, there's still a decent amount of recoil because this thing is so light, but it's not as bad as, um, as my 12 gauge because my 12 gauge is a beast. Anyway, so we have some seven and a half shot, um, two and three quarter inch bird shot. So give it a whirl. Just like that, easy peasy. I've got a slug right here. Uh, this is Federal two and three quarter inch rifled slug. We're gonna put that in there. I'm gonna aim for that uh, silhouette target out there. We'll see how this goes. I aimed a little bit low because I'm not sure where these sights are sitting in and it hit right pretty much right where I was at so that's pretty accurate well fun let's try something else bingo I did want to apologize for all the wind and interference out there it's just windy out here in general uh, no matter when we come out so please bear with that and i appreciate you guys for sticking it out thanks so let's give this a whirl and let's see if this would potentially be a good option for home defense i've got four shots i'm going to reload them or throw them in and reload it as fast as i can this is with zero training zero experience with a single shot shotgun so let's give it a whirl I've got some uh, Federal Black Cloud, three inch, uh, one ounce steel shot. We're gonna give it a whirl. That three inch kick's pretty good. Now, you can see That because of the very short barrel, when I shoot that silhouette out there, the bird shot has already spread out a ton. And you, you can see it hitting things far behind because it's spread out that much. Here's just a regular two and three quarter inch seven shot. head back to the garage so final thoughts before I started making this video I did a little bit of research and I had some concerns about this gun a few reviews I had found on the internet had mentioned that the gun had light primer stripes right out of the box these reviews were few and far between however I did find more than one thus far I have not had a single hiccup with my 20 gauge shotgun the gun was fun to shoot it was reliable it shot anything and everything that I put in it. 
and I just absolutely have loved it so far. The recoil was a little bit more than I was expecting it to be for a 20 gauge, but again, I'm shooting it out of a five pound shotgun. So let's talk about its practicality and uses. For home defense, this gun would not be my first choice, simply due to the fact that it's a single shot. If there's more than one intruder, or if you happen to miss, reloading might be a luxury that you don't have. For home defense, it does have a few things going for it. Uh, the power is definitely there. As long as you hit your target, you're gonna knock whatever it is down. You have a variety of ammunition choices that you can put in the gun. And because the gun is so small, it is easily maneuvered in small spaces. So while it might not be my first choice for home defense, it definitely could work. As a fun range gun, I think that's where this gun really comes in and excels. Um, there's something about a break action that is just plain fun. Accuracy wise, uh, this is hitting right on target where I was with slugs. Um, birdshot functioned great. I don't have any comments about buckshot because I have not been able to get a hold of any buckshot for 20 gauge um, thus far. For hunting, I'm going to admit that that is not my forte. I've actually never been hunting. Such a poser. So I can't speak to everything. All of my knowledge on this is theoretical but I believe that with the proper load and the proper shot placement, this gun would be able to take out most things on North America. The advertised velocity for slugs that I have found for 20 gauge was about 1600 feet per second uh, with a three quarter ounce load. This gun does have a little bit of a shorter barrel. So even if we knock off say hundred feet per second off of that average, you're gonna get over 2200 joules of kinetic energy now, joules might not be the best option to measure lethality in every case, but I do think it can offer a decent baseline when you're talking cartridge to cartridge. Final area I think this gun can do very well as is a backpack gun or a survival gun. One you can throw in a bag when you're going hiking or backpacking or just use it as an emergency prep gun. Um, I think it can excel in those regards. Speaking of which, we're gonna have a video doing just that to this little guy. I should mention before I go that this side saddle right here did not come with the gun. I purchased this separately. It's gonna be part of my build that you'll get to see in the next week or two. If you'd like to see a video like that, go ahead and subscribe down below. Make sure you click the notification bell so that you can know exactly when I upload that video. That brings me to a close on my review. Thank you so much for watching and may God bless you. I don't think he made it.